Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Ford, and I am part of the sales team here at CIQ. I love Ansible. I use Ansible both in my work and personal lives, and I really believe in uh, really allowing, allowing Ansible automation to scale amongst large teams. So one of the tools that's really great for that is AWX, which is a community project that allows different individuals with different skill sets and different levels of access to take advantage of automation. The challenge with that is, I think, twofold. Number one, uh, AWX is running on top of Kubernetes, which is a container orchestration platform. It can be very complex, and that takes a lot of uh, study to learn and get value out of, which is a challenge for people for whom DevOps is not a background. And then I think the second part of that is uh, the instructions for installing AWX on top of Kubernetes is very um, uh, is very generic. If you want to install AWX on top of Amazon Cloud or Google Kubernetes Engine or Azure Kubernetes Service, there's no specific instructions for those very different, similar but different Kubernetes platforms. And I've seen so many places on the internet where people are having trouble getting AWX up and running and installing it for that very reason. So one of the things we've done here at CIQ is build something called the Ascender Installer. Um, I wanted to accomplish two things there. And again, one of the things is, how do we take away and abstract Kubernetes from the installation process and make it super easy to install uh, and get Ascender running for large scale automation with Ansible with very little Kubernetes knowledge? So I'd like to say one of those things are solved there. The second thing is, I want to make this very specific for certain platforms of Kubernetes. So what we're looking at right here is the repository for a center install. So it's just github.com slash control IQ slash ascender dash install. And one of the things you'll see here is a section for instructions by Kubernetes platform. And try to cover all the major Kubernetes services with more to come. If you want to kick the tires, there's a lightweight Kubernetes version called K3S that's really great to start with. Uh, but if you want to run on any of the major cloud providers, so Amazon, uh, Microsoft, or Google, those are all listed here. And they all have specific instructions for installing a sender and getting automation at scale with each of these platforms. So today, what I'm going to do is go over the Ascender installer for Google Kubernetes Engine. And I'm going to go ahead and click in here. So I won't go through all these instructions word for word, but what do we want to look at here? We want to look at some general prerequisites. So if you want to get started with installing uh, a sender on top of Google Kubernetes Engine, what's not listed here, if you have to go back to the main screen, is you need basically an enterprise Linux machine that's running. Could be anywhere, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's on your premise or in the cloud someplace else, it doesn't have to be Google. This has to be major version nine, not eight. So today I'm using a Rocky Linux instance, uh, Rocky Linux version nine, to install a sender on top of GKE. Uh, we need a Google Cloud account that has appropriate permissions to set up a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so you can look at Google Cloud documentation to make sure you have that set up. We also need a project within Google Cloud in order to set up everything, all the Google Cloud platform artifacts that will be needed to run a sender. So all those instructions are here to get that set up, uh, including some pictures. So for example, one of the things you have to do on your enterprise Linux server is install the Google Cloud SDK. So I just have a link here just showing where you can find it, how to install it, and also some pictures so you can have an idea of what you can expect when you're in going through the login process for the Google Cloud SDK. So that's kind of here too. Um, just a number of instructions here that actually walk us through what you need to do for prerequisites for your Enterprise Linux 9, or in my case, Rocket Linux 9 instance, to be able to install a center on top of GKE. So from there, I have a couple of other things listed here too. So there's, for Google Cloud, you have APIs for the different services, and you have to actually enable uh, two specific APIs. One is the Google Kubernetes Engine API. The other one is for if you plan to use Google Cloud DNS, uh, to actually resolve URLs for a sender. So you don't have to, but if you choose to, then we have to have the Google Cloud DNS API enabled as well. 
Um, if you do intend to use Google Cloud DNS to get your URL set up for a sender, so in my case, I'm just using a sender.michael4.io, I have to set up within Google Cloud DNS a zone, a DNS name. So in my case, this is michael4.io. For you, it'll obviously be different. And we need that set up here before we get started. So that's just a high level overview of what we have to do within Google Cloud and on our Rocky Linux 9 instance to be able to install a sender. So once that's all set up, you can clone the repository. So this is an example of how to do that here on your Rocky Linux 9 instance. Uh, you can set variables for installing GKE. Uh, so there's two things we have to do here. One is we have to actually get the inventory file that, that Ansible needs in order to uh, install a sender. An example of that is at this directory, and actually I have a link to that here. You can simply copy that to your uh, inventory file at the top level of the repository where you clone it. The second thing that's a little bit more involved is we need variables that basically describe to the sender install script what to do. So things like, do we need to run SSL or not? Do you need to provision a brand new Kubernetes cluster or use an existing one? Do you uh, want to specify whether to use Google Cloud DNS or something else? All that stuff is actually specified in this file that we will generate called custom.config.yaml. How do we generate this file? Uh, we're actually going to use an existing script called configvars.sh. It's just a script that will ask a series of questions so instead of you having to go to a variable file and manually change values that you may or may not know to change, this is actually going to walk you through and ask you questions. Hey, if we're going to install this on GKE, you're going to need to specify uh, username and password. You're going to have to specify uh, DNS. Uh, you're going to have to specify all the things that I talked about in order to install a sender properly on top of whatever cloud platform you choose. So instead of going through this all right now, I've got an example of what this might look like after you run it. So this is just a example file in the same directory as the instructions themselves. So this is not quite the same as what I'm running today, but just to point out some of these values that we want to specify. So for platform, in this case, it'll be GKE. Uh, if you want to run HTTP or HTTPS, HTTPS rather, you can set that here. If you want to use Google DNS or something else like Cloudflare, you can set true or false here. Um, some other things that we want to point out, the actual cluster name for GKE. This is one of the few things that you might want to know uh, Kubernetes information for, but that's going to be the long and short of it. Um, how many of those are in the cluster, the version. This is just to inform the Ascender installer that this is a version of Google Cloud we're going to be using, excuse me, Kubernetes that we're going to be using for GKE. But that's all you need to know there. Um, just a number of things that we have to set here. So the DNS name, um, the version of Ascender, the operative version, all that stuff is set up here. But instead of having to go through each of these individual variables and set them in the file itself, that is where the config vars shell file comes into play. So this is the result of what comes out of that config bar shell file, something that you don't have to mess with directly, unless you're so inclined. So we have our file, we have our inventory file, and the only thing that we have to do after that is actually run the install script itself. So it's literally just setup.sh. After you run that, several things will happen. Uh, if we need to download any Ansible collections to install a sender, we will. Uh, we can actually set up our Terraform script, which is actually going to be used to uh, instantiate everything within Google Cloud that will be generated there. A sender will get installed, and actually some artifacts will be created that will let it allow us to more easily uninstall, upgrade uh, a sender, and also delete the cluster itself. This whole thing should take 20 to 25 minutes so you can step away and get a cup of coffee. And the end result will look something like this. So you'll see the playbook is actually run, how many tasks have changed successfully, how many have completed. And actually what I've done here is actually run this before recording this video. 
and we can see here the results of everything. So I run the installer. We can see how many things have changed. This is on a very small instance of Rocket Linux 9 in the cloud. So that's here. And that's it. I literally just let this run for 20 minutes or so, walked away, came back, and everything's done. After that, if I go back to my browser, a few things have happened. Number one is I have an instance of a sender. If I log in, so admittedly, there's not going to be a lot of interesting things here yet, just because this is a brand new, fresh install of a sender. If I wanted to, there's also one option in the variables file that lets us populate some standardized Rocky Linux playbooks. So if you want to do some basic patching or gathering information, which are called facts and Ansible, all that, that's going to be available if you so choose. In this case, I've elected to just leave everything fresh and blank. So that's why we don't see anything here yet. I just want to show that after that 20 minutes, everything's set up here for center automation. Now, although this is not necessary, the other things that I want to show is the actual Kubernetes artifacts that are created as part of this too. So if I go actually into my Google Cloud account, I'll see here within Kubernetes engine, this is the cluster that we created. I gave it a name of a sender dash GKE dash cluster. I chose this particular version of uh, Google Kubernetes, excuse me, of Kubernetes rather. Uh, and that's set up here, specified three nodes. All those three nodes are here as well. And if I go to the actual workflows themselves, I can actually see the Kubernetes artifacts. So for a sender, the web front end deployment is here. Uh, the Postgres database is here. You can actually use an internal Postgres database that runs as a container, or you can specify an external Postgres database to run on top of as well. Um, all this stuff is here. So I just want to show completely unnecessary to look this up, but showing all the work that the Ascender installer has taken care of. So in the last two things that I want to show here in the terminal once more is number one, I've done a kubectl get pods so that we can actually see the same artifacts that I saw in the web GUI. That's actually showing the Kubernetes artifacts that are running and running a sender. And let's say we want to either upgrade or uninstall a sender or even delete the cluster. There's some artifacts here that let us do that. So if we look at this directory, so the directory that I specified called a sender install artifacts, and it's going to hold a few things. Number one is a timestamp Kubernetes manifest so that if we want to either upgrade a sender, we can simply go into this, this manifest change the container image to a later version and just do a kubectl apply on this file or you can just edit the custom.config.yaml file that i showed earlier and actually rerun the installer and it will update the container image that way too if you want to uninstall a sender altogether you can simply do a kubectl delete dash f and point to this file and all the artifacts in kubernetes that make up a sender will be deleted uh, same thing for the uh, AWX operator as well. Uh, we can actually use this customization file to delete that too. So that's how we can manage the life cycle of a sender and the AWX operator. Now for the cluster itself, let's say you don't want to go through the GUI for uh, GKE to destroy the cluster. One of the things that I love about Ansible and a sender is that we can use it to invoke other things too. So in this case, we've actually used Terraform to deploy the GKE cluster itself. All the state files that describe that cluster are in this directory. So if we go to this directory, we just run terraform destroy within this directory, that will de de destroy everything within GKE. So the cluster, uh, the VPC, all the networking, everything that was created with the setup file, so the setup script rather, is gonna be deleted from here with terraform. So. One of the things I love about this installer, actually a few things, uh, you don't need prior Kubernetes knowledge to run the installer, but it definitely helps if you want to manage the cluster itself. You can deploy things on a number of similar yet different Kubernetes platforms. So the API for Google Kubernetes engine is going to be way different from EKS. So it's also going to be different from AKS as well from Microsoft. So this installer will install a center on top of each of those doesn't matter which one. And then if we want to manage the life cycle, so upgrade, delete, destroy, 
uh, uninstall, we can do that all from the command line of the installer itself. 